Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Everybody's joining on, jumping on. Welcome in, welcome in. Give folks a little bit of time to jump on here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. See folks trickling in. Good morning, good morning. See some old friends there. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tour Tuesday. And we'll we'll get started here uh, in a, a couple of minutes. We'll give folks a little bit of time to trickle in. All right, all right. Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. As you can see, this is the United Way of Greater Nashville's uh, virtual tour Tuesday. Uh, my name is Darius Moore. Uh, I'm an account manager here with uh, the Greater Nashville United Way. Um, definitely excited to have everyone today. Um, I have the, the great pleasure of being able to work this tour Tuesday series. Um, for all that haven't been exposed to or haven't had the opportunity to join us uh, for two, Tour Tuesday before. Tour Tuesday is essentially an opportunity uh, for folks here in our community to get an inside look at the great work happening in our community through the work uh, with our uh, partner agencies with United Way. Um, for fellow nonprofit folks, uh, this is a great way to learn about some of the other service providers and programs um, that might be beneficial to the clients and the, the uh, communities that you serve. Um, for those uh, wanting to get involved and volunteer, it's a great way to uh, hear more about some of those volunteer opportunities and engagement um, opportunities for folks from your companies. Uh, and for all of our United Way donors, this is obviously a fantastic opportunity to hear about um, some of the great agencies that um, you're investing your dollars into. Um, while we do hope that this is, um, uh, we do have the opportunities to get together again uh, soon um, for in-person tours. We're happy to do this virtual series um, just to give everybody a chance to be able to join us uh, and engage. On today's Tour Tuesday, as you can see, uh, a good friend of mine, Ms. Karen Gillingham, is here to join us from uh, the New, Be New Beginning Center. Uh, and uh, they'll talk a little bit about um, the work they do uh, providing the, the services and uh, empowering women to make significant changes to improve their health and quality of life. Uh, so we have a, a, the great privilege of uh, having Miss Karen Gillingham, the Director of Operations for uh, the New Be Beginnings uh, Center. And so we'll start today's session, I'm um, just giving an overview of what of the work that New Beginnings does. Um, she'll talk a little bit about some of the um, specific things they're working on and, and have been working on throughout the, the last couple of years. Uh, and then we'll follow that uh, up with a, a little bit of a Q&A. So, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Ms. Karen Gillingham with New Beginnings. 
Thanks so much, Darius. And thanks everybody for being here today. I really appreciate this opportunity to, um, to be here with all of you and tell you a little bit about our mission and the work we do and, and what we're looking forward to in the coming months and years. Um, I, um, I'm the Director of Operations for New Beginnings. I've been here for three years and I have um, fitness um, and personal training was a second career for me. Um, I had always worked in marketing and development, worked with nonprofits um, a lot during my career. And when I moved to Nashville three years ago, I wasn't sure if I wanted to uh, continue to do personal training, have a studio here, um, or, um, or if I should just make a change. And I found this position with New Beginnings, which was just a perfect match for me. It was um, a an opportunity for me to bring my nonprofit experience with my love of training and my passion for um, helping women discover the strength in themselves. So that's how I got here. And I feel like I have the best job in the world. Um, and I'll just a little bit about, um, about New Beginnings. Um, we, are, we celebrated 10 years last year. Um, our founder is Tash Weddle, and she was a former strength and conditioning coach at, um, at Vanderbilt. And she was actually working with the former president of Habitat for Humanity, um, Chris McCarthy. And so she and Chris just started brainstorming and um, thought, you know, how great would it be to bring services, um, personal training, nutrition, and behavior change to people who couldn't otherwise afford it. So that's when they started the New Beginning Center. And I'm going to share my screen now. And we'll look at just a little video and some slides. All right. And Karen, while you're getting set up, um, for everyone that's, that's joining us uh, again, today is essentially to get a, a good overview of the work that New Beginnings, the New Beginning Center does. Um, but we're, we're going to definitely keep this super casual despite my bow tie, uh, <laughs> which I'll address the elephant in the room. I got a bow tie on. So that's my thing. Karen was supposed to be wearing a bow tie too, but I don't yes. know what happened. I think I uh, know. Got lost in the let, shuffle this morning. I let you down. Yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, we want to keep this as casual as possible as far as um, you all. Please feel free to enter um, questions that you have in through the chat. Uh, again, we'll an answer those questions in, in full uh, after we do a, a, a brief presentation. At the end of the presentation, uh, Karen will um, talk through a couple of uh, highlights that she wants to share. Um, but it'll give you an opportunity to, to ask specific questions. So feel free to enter those into the chat. I'll see them um, and we'll, we'll definitely get those addressed. So with no further ado, carry All right, on. here we go. A good coach sees the potential in someone who may not see that themselves and brings it out in them. Especially in the fitness industry, personal training, nutrition coaching can be out of the reach for so many financially. And so we wanted to help women with lower incomes have this opportunity. The cost for one woman to receive our services for one year is $1,000. Over 80% of the women in the New Beginnings program have qualified for full scholarships, meaning there's no cost to them. We don't want cost to be a barrier for anyone. At the New Beginnings Center, we offer individualized nutrition coaching, fitness training, and what we call behavior change coaching. But one of the most important things that we do here is seeing how these women have bonded with each other and created a community of strong, like-minded women. Our program breaks down health barriers and it's actually preventative health care. Your donation makes a bigger difference than you could ever know in these women's lives. Oops, sorry about that. A good coach. Here we go. And, and this is our, our mission statement. Um, and we have served more than 3,000 women uh, since we started 10 years ago. But basically, we want our, our, our main goal is to help women discover them, the, the strength in themselves um, inside and out um, through, through our coaching. Just trying to advance my slide here. 
I'm not sure why that's not going. Let me try this. There we go. Okay. So we do our work um, through 12 week programs primarily. We have three different um, programs that we offer every year starting in January, April, and July. And we meet twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, our next session is uh, starting up April 5th. So we are accepting applications now uh, for that. We break up every class into two parts. Um, we spend 30 minutes in our classroom where we talk about healthy habits, talk about nutrition, what belongs on our plate. Um, we do a lot of self-actualization work um, because we know that we need to feel good about ourselves in order to make positive, sustainable change. So we do things like destination postcards where we write a letter from our future self to our current self, just encouraging us to stay on the path that the reward is worth it. Um, we do vision boards and um, we also do a book study in the class. Um, so lots of opportunities to share, to um, just think about our core values and the, the person that we wanna be and just to try to get all those things in alignment. And it's hard to do um, and hard to do in 12 weeks, but we, um, we are able to uh, help our clients to just uh, fill up a toolkit that they can take with them. Um, then we spend 30 minutes on our floor in, um, in a strength training um, program. We do a quarterly in-body scan so that we are able to measure fat loss and muscle gain. So we do not like the scale, just the plain old scale, um, because the scale doesn't tell us what's going on inside. So when we gain muscle, we are, that number will be reflected on the scale. But what we're more concerned about is fat loss and, and visceral, visceral fat loss. And then we also do pre and post program surveys so that we have some data to share with um, our, our funders um, about the effectiveness of our program. Most of our clients um, have never set foot in the gym um, or have ever done strength training before. Um, and strength training is really just one little component of our program that helps women understand that they can do things that they've never done before. Um, we all know that making change is really hard. Um, but when we start, and when we start to learn about all the things that we should be doing with nutrition, how much water, how much movement we should be getting, it can really seem like a lot. And, um, but doing um, the work that we do on the gym floor, uh, just right away helps women realize that um, you know, they can, they can do a, a ring row or a, a suspended row that they can lift a heavy kettlebell, things that they just never even thought that they could do. And so very quickly in the program, we see people just, you know, standing up a little taller, um, walking a little lighter, just because of what they, they're experiencing on the gym floor. Our clients tell us that, um, you know, we like to think that the most important part of our program is all of the information that we share, but we hear from the women that the most important piece of their success is the connection that they make with other ladies who are on a similar health journey. Um, as caregivers and caretakers, women take on a lot, often at the expense of ourselves. Um, and so our program gives women to permission to put themselves first and make them understand that that's not being selfish, um, right? Um, and by taking care of ourselves first, we have more energy to give to the people that we love. We have more energy to give to the work that we do, um, to our volunteer things and all of the other things that we do. So it's just like when, if anybody's ever been on an airplane, I'm sure most people have, and they say, put your oxygen mask on first and then help somebody else. This is what that is. Uh, the exercises that we coach in our program are functional in nature. So we, um, you know, we need to be able to sit down and stand back up. We need to be able to pick up things from the floor without hurting our back. 
And so we, we teach moves like the squat um, hinges or deadlifts. Um, we do a lot of balance work um, in our program because anytime that we throw our body slightly off balance, just by standing on one foot or even a split stance, um, or we push something away from our body that's trying to pull us the other direction, all, our core muscles are, are fired up and engaged. And, and that helps our posture. It helps us um, to protect our back from injury. Um, we do a lot of, we do upper body work um, where we do, you know, pushing exercises, pulling exercises, lots of core, uh, core work like planks. Um, and so we use, like in this picture, we have ropes and you can see the um, rings hanging in the background. We use kettlebells, dumbbells, resistance bands, all the things, sleds. And so I mentioned our in-body body composition analyzer a little bit ago, where we keep track of fat loss and lean muscle gain. We're currently seeing on average about an 8% body composition change just in 12 weeks, which is amazing. Um, and so this women who achieve an 8% body composition change, they are making some changes to their nutrition. So, so they are starting to replace, um, processed foods with real food. Um, they are prioritizing protein. Um, and so when, when I say that, what I mean is that we're trying to get six, uh, four to six palm sized servings of protein a day. Um, for most people, um, for uh, people who do not eat um, lean meats, if if someone is a vegetarian, um, it, it can it can still um, we can still see these um, the gains in muscle. We know that there is protein in vegetables, and um, so. Um, but I just wanted to to throw that out there because some people think if I don't if I don't eat meat, you know, what are my chances? Um, and so again, we really, the, the numbers that we're most concerned or that we focus in on most are um, fat loss, visceral fat loss, um, as well as um, the, the muscle um, improvement that people are making in the program. When a client finishes our 12 week program, um, she can repeat the program at any time. She could go, again in the next 12 weeks, or she can wait and come back anytime. Um, we do know that sometimes people get to the end of the 12 weeks and they feel like they're just starting to get some traction. And so they feel like I need to keep, I need to keep this, this schedule going for myself. Um, so women are welcome to repeat. Um, we also offer free exercise classes for our graduates on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays so that anybody who comes through our program always has access to um, a gym that is um, all women and it is really clean I don't, um, and um, judgment-free zone. So um, they know that they can always come in for quality, for quality training. Um, and then I just wanted to mention real quick, we're very, very excited about um, a, a new app that we're going to be launching. Um, I'm probably in July, um, and it's going to integrate with Fitbit and with Apple Watches, and um, we're going to be able to provide uh, workouts for clients. We're going to be able to provide um, just ongoing material for them to um, support them in their health journeys. And it's also going to be a great way for us to keep in touch um, and keep track um, of, of data and how, how our clients are doing on a long-term basis. We offer monthly workshops as a way to, um, there for our New Beginnings family, but it's also a way that we can get introduced to new people in the community. Sometimes we work with other nonprofit agencies um, in the upper right-hand corner, um, we worked with Nashville Food Project to do a container gardening workshop. The Nashville Opera was just here last Saturday and did a kid's performance, which was amazing. 
Um, in the lower left, one of our clients, Lenise Campbell, she makes herb, herb butter. And so she did um, a presentation for us. Um, so we, we love to um, involve our clients, but then we also love to involve people um, from the community. Terry um, is our Tai Chi master there. He is a veteran um, who uh, teaches Tai Chi and teaches, um, does teacher training um, to veterans. Um, and so he did a couple of um, workshops for us. And then we did, um, we did an art, uh, artful meditation workshop. So just trying to use some different, different skills as a way to de-stress. And then we did the soundtrack of our lives with TPAC um, last year, which was really great. That is a very cool activity. Um, we have a, a teenage girls program that we are piloting right now and it's going very well. And so we're gonna be getting this off the ground in the next several months. Um, but we wanted to bring um, our program to girls between the ages of 13 and 18. Um, we are, targeting girls, uh, all girls will be welcome, but really targeting girls who do not, um, are not part of an organized sports team. Um, we know that those teenage years can be kind of tough and we know how empowering exercise is. And sometimes um, girls feel like that kind of activity is really just for people who are in sports. And so we just want to show them how they can incorporate um, some, some movement. And then it's a time for them to share, uh, share and connect with each other. And so we're, we're very, very um, excited about this program that we're starting. And then I just wanted to let you all know too that we take our program out into the community. Um, so we do a class on Monday nights at St. Luke's Community House. Uh, we do a program at the National Public Library in Antioch on Wednesday nights. These are all free classes. We go to the Magruder Family Resource Center on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at noon. And then I do a seniors program at the Bethlehem Center on, um, on Thursdays as well. And then I just wanted to let you all know about some volunteer opportunities that, that we have here. Um, we have people who will come to the, the classes that we have on Tuesdays and Thursday nights during our 12 week program. Even if you don't have a fitness background, um, but you just like the idea of what we do, um, we, we love for people to be on the floor to help encourage our clients and just say, you know, way to go, you're doing great. Um, and then if uh, we also have people help us set up equipment um, and then clean it at the end of the workout before the next class rolls in. Um, ambassadors are um, people familiar with our work who will come with us to health fairs. We haven't done these in a little while, but we're hoping these to start coming back soon. Health fairs or um, just different events um, to help represent um, new beginnings. Uh, luminaries are, are the people who do our workshops. So anybody who has, um, you know, just a, a skill, um, something that they like to share. So we've had people um, come in and do meditation workshops for us, decluttering um, a, uh, let's see, a wardrobe. It was like how to edit your closet. So we've had a lot of really interesting uh, workshops and we're, we, we just love to, to just consider, you know, all kinds of topics. Um, and then creatives are our volunteers who come in and will take pictures for us and maybe do some videos and, you know, pull some things together that we can use in our marketing efforts. So Darius, I'm going to pause there and just see if there are some questions before I talk about habits. Don't see any in the chat thus far, but I what so I, I will uh, follow in and thank you again, Karen, for for sharing that and kind of giving an overview of the work that uh, New Big New Beginnings does. Obviously, we know um, health is a is a huge um, issue in our community uh, with so many health issues, 
uh, linked to lifestyle behaviors is so refreshing to know that this program uh, and the work that you all do in the new, new beginning center um, helps to to help folks folks have some more resources and a uh, better understanding to make those lifestyle changes um, they can significantly improve their their personal health and the fact that you all have a very concentrated focus area and focus demographic of, of serving women uh, in our community who all have plenty of responsibilities just like everyone else but uh, more so uh, because of all the different roles that they're asked to play. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's tremendous. And so um, love that you highlighted uh, teen girls. I, I have one myself. Uh, so yes. I, I know that that is a critical piece of, and my daughter uh, is involved in a, um, sports and, and, and whatnot. And I know it's really helped her mental health. And so um, I can speak firsthand on, on the positive benefits of being active and having something engaging. So I think that's really incredible that y'all have a, a focused um, emphasis on those those girls that aren't as actively involved in sports. So talk a little bit more about that as, as, as we're waiting for more questions that get dropped in the chat. Yeah, I, um, so we, um, the components of the program are, are the same in, in a way as our adult women's program in terms of covering nutrition and um, just healthy lifestyle behaviors and then the exercise but it is definitely age appropriate. So we know that the girls in our program are probably not the ones who are doing the grocery shopping and the meal planning, but we can talk at least about, um, you know, processed foods versus real foods. You know, what, you know, what does that mean? And, and why is it important to, to have foods like, you know, fruits and vegetables, um, understanding a little bit about the, the nutrients that they give our bodies. And that, um, and how foods can affect our mood, and how moods can affect our food choices, um, and then it's. Uh, I think the one of the the greatest um, parts of the program that I'm hearing so far is just the girls' ability just to connect with each other and share whatever is on their mind, um, and it's just a very safe space for them to um, to share with each other. The currently the girls um, are all from different schools. They're all different ages, um, and but it's just it's been wonderful to see. And I, I think that the fact that they are not um, with some of their close friends, mm -hmm. that it's a little bit easier for them to just be who they want to be when they're with us in this space. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I know that um, the social component is is a big part of it. And I know that. Um, there has been a lot more emphasis and a lot more um, need for emphasis um, in, in with the pandemic happening and, and everybody kind of being isolated. So, uh, and, and, and I'll ask, so that, that's a great segue into the next part of our, our discussion. So talk a little bit about, you know, as we, we look forward and, and also reflect back on um, the last couple of years, obviously during the pandemic, uh, can you talk and share a little bit about what are, what are some of the things that New Beginnings has done um, to adapt during the pandemic in terms of how you reach, obviously being in person and having that face-to-face -face interaction is a huge component of the work uh, yes. that you all do serve in the community. So talk a little bit how y'all have adapted um, through that. Yeah, we were in, uh, like it was right about now, I think because we were in week 10 of our 12 week program in, in March of 2020 when um, we had to just shift uh, and we, you know, what, what do you do? You know, we couldn't leave, these, these women who were so close to graduating from the program, just, you know, hanging out there. So we, um, we quickly learned how to use Zoom and everybody was all about it. So we, um, we also give everybody a, a resistance band uh, to take home as part of our program. So we, um, we still did our workouts um, via Zoom. So we, we just did our last two weeks, just as we would just changed our workout so that everybody could do it comfortably at home with a resistance band. And then we had our first online graduation. Um, it went great, you know, cause it was at that time where, I mean, you know, of course everybody would have preferred in person, but it was this, like, everyone's just trying to wrap their head around this new reality. And so being connected, even this way, you know, with little windows, um, it, it was, it was just, it worked very well. And then we realized that we couldn't do our April in-person program. So um, uh, we offered 
a six week program because we were sure that everything was just going to be like back to normal in six weeks. So I said, yeah, let's just do a six week. Well, it'll, it'll mostly focus on just mental well being because that's really what we need right now. So, um, and it was exciting because we were able to reach um, so many more people. I think everybody really had a need for connection. They had a need for just practicing some skills, some resilient skills. And um, so we, we ended up meeting a lot of new people um, through that program. And then when that ended, we did an eight week program. <laughs> and then we, um, we or actually it was a four week, sorry. It was a four week and then an eight week, I guess that equals 12. So then in July, we, we did um, a virtual program and then we did two hybrid classes. So one class met completely online for the 12 weeks. And then the two other classes we did, um, a Monday night uh, Zoom session where we covered all of the curriculum. So we didn't go in our classroom at all. And then the, we did meet in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays with masks um, in our gym in a new layout that was socially distanced. So um, we, uh, and our gym is still laid out that way. And that's another mm -hmm. silver lining that came from uh, COVID is that, um, for our, our, our new beginnings classes, we used to do circuit. So we would break the class into three groups and everybody would travel around from, from circuit to circuit. And now everybody has her own workout space and every workout space has power blocks, which are just adjustable dumbbells. Um, and they have all of the things they need. They have a, you know, a rack, they um, have a resistance bands and a suspension training like a TRX and a bench. And so um, we don't have to trade around equipment um, and everybody, yeah. So um, that was really a, a nice deal because um, when we would be in our circuits, let's say that we had kettlebells set out for people to do a, a kettlebell deadlift. Mm -hmm. um, people will go to the smallest kettlebell <laughs> to lift it instead of looking at the biggest one going, hmm, I, you know, and so now we, we have, everybody has her workout card and, you know, we're walking around saying, you know, uh, you know, making sure that it's, that the weight is appropriate for them. Let me say that. And so if we can tell that somebody can go up, we're going to get them the next size kettlebell or, you know, make a suggestion. So we've really been able to do even a little bit more personal training with them and individual strength development, which has been really exciting. That's awesome. And you, you talked about um, some of the, the silver linings and some of those things that you all have adapted. So what, what other things are that y'all have created outside of those individualized spaces and the, the equipment that you are keeping uh, that you've adapted and things that you think, hey, these this really works and is really helpful and helps to um, maybe alleviate any pressures or any anything that's going to cause uh, folks to not be as engaged or be able to be present. What other things have y'all adapted that, that you think, hey, this is definitely something that we want to keep going forward? I think the the other big thing that we um, that we implemented was um, just some some virtual check ins with clients, and so they look they're they're they look a little bit you know um, well, or they're all a little bit different. We we do like a habit review um, for some clients. Um, we. Um, and then we just have other virtual, it's just kind of like connection groups. Let me put it that way. And so some are, um, some people just need a little reset. Um, you know, they, um, some people just need connection. They just want to see people talk to people. So we've, we've kept the virtual um, and it kind of expanded our offering. And we've also been able to um, ask clients for their, their help in this because, um, you know, clients who come through our program and, and especially those who've been through it a couple of times, some of them are better coaches than, than me. And so they, they are so inspirational and motivational and, um, and, and they're sharing their own, they're sharing stories and, um, you know, here's how I got over my challenge for food prepping. Um, this is a recipe I made, um, you got, you know, everybody should try it. It's super easy. Um, so that's probably another thing, just like keeping the virtual programming going to stay connected with people. 
who may not be able to come in to the center. That's awesome. That's awesome. It, it, it sounds like uh, you all have, have really made it as, as easy uh, and as feasible as possible for uh, folks to get uh, access to the resources that you provide and making sure that it's a, uh, an, an inequitable uh, amount of resources that you're sharing out to the community. Uh, so that, I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. And I think it helps to um, underscore the reasons why and, and, and the type of relationships that uh, United Way fosters with our um, nonprofit partners, such as uh, New Beginnings, because it's, it helps to support um, those, those services and promote healthy living in our community. Um, so I, I, I love it. I love it. So I, what, what I'll, I'll also ask is um, maybe talk about what are you looking forward to? So, uh, you know, I talked about being reflective. What are you looking forward to for um, you and the team at New Beginnings looking forward to for the, the upcoming uh, next year and, and year plus um, as yes. far as the how you're engaging and supporting the community. Absolutely. And I just, uh, one of the things I forgot to, to mention um, when, when I was going through my slides is that um, New Beginnings programming is in the evenings. And so the, the gym where our center is was empty, sitting empty during the day. So um, Tash uh, started a social enterprise called TNB Fitness. Um, and TNB Fitness provides uh, personal training for, um, at, at, for market rate uh, clients. And um, so a portion of the fee that personal training clients pay um, for TNB Fitness goes directly towards New Beginnings as an income stream. And um, so, and, and that business has just gone crazy um, this year. We've seen people coming back. Um, there was a, quite a big drop off, obviously, uh, during COVID and then a reticence um, in many to come back when it was possible to start coming back to the gym. But in the last um, yeah, three or four months, we've just seen a huge growth um, uh, on that side of the business. Um, and so new, the New Beginning Center is um, looking forward to just continuing um, the work that we're doing here. We're going to keep on um, with our 12-week programs, offering three different classes a night. So we're able to um, we're able to work with about 52 women every quarter um, because we can have um, four, up to 14 in a class. Um, we're looking forward to just expanding our partnerships. We, um, we have a partnership with Big Brothers Big Sisters where we are bringing a virtual program to their parents um, two different times a year. And we um, have a, uh, we're working with Thistle Farms with their, um, one of their residences bringing um, a nutrition and wellness conversation to them every week. And um, so we're just looking forward to growing in that, in that way. The once we get our app up and running, we will be looking forward to expanding our program and, and possibly duplicating it in other cities. Um, we feel like this new technology is going to make that a lot easier um, to share our curriculum and also to train coaches. So we um, try to think what else besides, and then with our um, the teen girls program. Um, we do hope to be bringing that to schools um, because we feel like that is going to help alleviate a big transportation issue that we're facing right now. Mm -hmm. um, so just yeah, looking forward to growing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think this is, uh, this is such wonderful uh, information that you've shared. I, I, I will ask before we jump into the Q&A, um, can you share a little bit, Karen? You, you, talked, a, you talked a little high level about some of those volunteer uh, um, opportunities and folks for folks from the community that want to get engaged and support the work that you do outside of just being clients. Can you share a little bit more about what those look like with you guys now uh, and going forward? Sure. Um, so the, the easy answer is that we will never turn away any help. So we will find a place for everyone. Um, and the, and volunteers can, can help us just on a, a one-off basis, you know, like I've got time to help you with this health fair or, uh, and we use hands on Nashville, um, as a way to, um, communicate, um, some of our volunteer opportunities. Um, so we have had people who have nutrition backgrounds, um, maybe even, you know, a dietitian, 
um, maybe a certified life coach that that want to come in and and work with a class. Um, some of our volunteers will be here both Tuesday and Thursday night for one of the classes. I always encourage people just to pick one because staying for three classes twice a week can be a lot. And so, you know, if somebody just has an hour to give, we'll take it. If somebody really wants the exposure and it feels good, they, they, um, it really moves them to be able to give back, then we sometimes have people helping us both Tuesday and Thursday evenings. Um, the, um, as far as uh, workshops are concerned, that's, that's a really big area where um, we just, we love to have people who, um, you know, you don't even have to necessarily be, uh, you know, a professional, um, but if you are somebody who is pretty good at budgeting and has a, you know, a, a plan, um, a structure that you could share with, um, with people who might be, who might need that kind of assistance. Um, people who love to cook, um, who could do a food demonstration. If you have an air fryer and, you know, know how to make great veggies, you know, things like that. So that's a really great way for us to um, have, uh, we love our, our volunteers who help us with our workshops. And then, um, yeah, and then in being here, just, you know, even just at graduation or at the beginning of a program to, you know, to get some pictures because we just always need um, updated photos of our, um, of our classes and the, and the work that we do. And I always have my, I, you know, I usually have my phone in my pocket, but when I'm out on the floor, I just, I never get to it. So I talk too much. <laughs> I, I love it. I think I think we all can relate to that in some some form or fashion or the other. I know I'm, I'm a, a, a bit of a talker, um, so I have to, sometimes I have to just step back and and listen to to all the great things that are out there. So um, I, what I'll, I'll at this point, I think it'll be great to um, to hear from from the rest of the group. Um, I think uh, it, this is the best space. Um, of any to really start asking questions that you may have had and maybe may have been pondering on with regard to getting engaged and volunteering, understanding the structures uh, of hosting uh, volunteer opportunities, uh, but also understanding better uh, uh, how to plug in and what, what options are out there. So um, this is definitely a space um, that we want to make sure we open up to anybody. So um, we'll definitely take some time uh, to for have all the attendees, if you can just drop your questions in the chat. Yeah, um, they could be health questions, for health sure. and wellness, fitness, anything. Don't be shy. And while you're doing that, while you're thinking, I'll, I'll just share our new beginnings anchor habit with you, which is um, water, walk and sleep. And so we, um, we help people remember this rule by, it's, it's called uh, just the 777 rule. So seven cups of water, seven hours of sleep and 7,000 steps. Yes, got mine too. So we, we actually wanna get about 64 ounces of water, but just to, to help people remember how much should I be drinking? Start with seven. And then we want to try to get seven or eight hours of sleep. We're all a little bit different with that, but there are definitely studies that show that people who um, are sleep deprived, it's harder to make um, healthy choices throughout the day. We crave carbohydrates because carbs give us energy. And so trying to get that sleep, that's a tough one. It's a tough one, especially if people wake up in the middle of the night and have a hard time getting back to sleep, but we just have to keep working at that. And then 7,000 steps, just depending on where you are. If you're somebody who is pretty sedentary at work, maybe only get 1,500 a day, just we just encourage people to just add a little bit, just maybe three to 500 steps a day. And they do not have to be like out walking around steps. They can be, you know, standing in place, marching. Everybody can do that. Um, and, uh, um, Let's see. So yeah, that was our, yeah, water, walk and sleep. And then, you know, getting up to 10,000 steps is fantastic. If you can, some people have that daily goal, which is amazing, but you just have to start where you are and then just every day, just do a little bit better. 
my wife's favorite phrase is, is start by starting. Uh, yes. So you, you, you have to start somewhere. Uh, yes. And so what, what better place to start than where you are? Um, and, you know, it, it again, it, to your, your, to underscore the point of, of habit stacking, um, we know that after a while, habit becomes just a regular pattern of behavior when you do it um, enough and repetitively enough and frequently enough, uh, it just becomes kind of second nature. So um, I definitely think that there's a, a tremendous benefit to starting with something small. You don't, you, know, mm -hmm. you, you can probably attest to this, you don't have to do everything all of the goals and accomplish everything at once. We want to just start somewhere uh, and move in, in a, a good positive direction that's moving you forward. So uh, I love right. that, love that, love that. Yep. And then we just, we don't appreciate the cumulative effects of the mm -hmm. small, the, the small steps that we're making because we we're so used to just getting, you know, getting the big, the big prize. And that's the only, like, I got to run the marathon. I got to run the marathon, you know, and it's like, you know, we're not appreciating, you know, all the steps that we're taking to get there, um, which are the most important steps. And, you know, doing accomplishing the marathon is amazing. Yes. But then a lot of times too, that's when people stop, right? They're like, okay, I did it. I'm done now. And we know that's not the end of the day. <laughs> right. just, just the start. I was actually talking with a buddy of mine this morning uh, about a marathon and he, he had the kind of disgusted look on his face talking about the prep that goes into it. But um, we know that those those healthy uh, habits and those things that you do now affect how you feel, you know, and not not too far, not too distant future. So um, it's all worth it. It's all worth it when it all comes down to it. So mm. love it, love it, love it. Well, Karen, I, I, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, so you know, you, you talked a little bit about some of the takeaways and some things that you're looking uh, forward to. What else do you want uh, our group here to know uh, before we wrap it up uh, for the day? Well, I thought, I, well, I'm just going to share this little um, tidbit about habits with you all, just as a little fun Absolutely. takeaway, um, because probably everybody has something that they're thinking about, maybe even going back to January at New Year's resolution time that maybe you wanted to see happen this year. Um, BJ Fogg has a TED talk um, called Tiny Habits that I would recommend. And then um, James Clear is the author of Atomic Habits, which you may have heard, but they're both um, just you know, kind of social um, scientists, behavior change uh, experts. Um, but James Clear talks about starting any new behavior with um, a two minute time limit. So really, um, really breaking it down small. And it's like, okay, so what, like, how is that even gonna make a difference, right? Like one, if I do something for two minutes today, it's like, yeah, that probably, like if you run for two minutes, you're probably not gonna be able to run a marathon. But if you do it every day and then the two minutes becomes easy, so then you can challenge yourself for a third, fourth, fifth minute, et cetera, then, then you're, you're gonna start to, to see some change. Um, and, and it can be, it doesn't have to be fitness related. I mean, if you want to learn to juggle, um, maybe you are a writer and you haven't picked up a pen in a while and you want to journal. Um, one of mine this year was to read. Um, I wanted to read 12 books this year, uh, 12 fiction books. Um, and so, you know, I thought, well, you know, it doesn't sound that bad. Like I can probably do that. But then if you don't have a plan, you know, you just kind of like, I, I'll just buy all these books and I'll have them ready. And, you know, that's part of it is like, obviously having the book, the books ready, but just setting aside two minutes to, to read a page, read a page. And then, um, you know, and then you'll, you'll start to build on that. Um, so BJ Fogg's Tiny Habits TED Talks talks about habit stacking, which is, um, it's attaching a new behavior to something that you already do. So um, we have anchor habits. These are things like Darius was just saying that they become just part of our routine, okay? So every morning I make coffee. And so I can stand there and just wait for my coffee to be made or I could, you know, do something. Maybe I read my, my couple pages and my two minutes of reading. 
maybe I have a journal in my kitchen and I open up the, my journal and I start to write some things down. It's a great time to do a gratitude practice. Um, maybe I step away from my counter and I do three push-ups. Um, so it's, you know, or when I get in my car and I buckle my seatbelt, that's another thing we all do all the time. I am going to take a sip of water from my water bottle. Um, so we are so much more likely to follow through on a new thing if we can attach it to something that we already do. Um, and then the implementation intention is another strategy that James Clare talks about in his book, which is I will do this behavior. I will journal at five o'clock in my dining room. So if um, they did a little study about this and they had three groups. The first group was just told to do the thing. This in, in the, the control groups, um, it was about exercise. Um, the, the, first, uh, the first group was just supposed to track when they did it. The second group tracked it and then they had to do benefit, or sorry, they had to do research on the benefits of exercise. And then the third group um, got all the same information as the first two control groups, but they had to complete a sentence where they said, I will walk at six o'clock in the morning in you know, my neighborhood or at the Y on the treadmill. So in the first two groups, 35 to 38% exercised at least once a week. So that was pretty good. But in that last one, the people who did the implementation intention, 91% did the thing. Isn't that amazing? So it is, um, isn't it? I mean, and I think it's, you know, it's a couple of things. I think that when we are, when we write something down, mm -hmm. we're using our brain, we're actually, you know, we've got the act of writing, which is, which is a reinforcement. And then it's that, just that little bit of commitment. And it's almost like it, you know, kind of in a vision board, you write it down, you, or you, you know, you put it up there, you see it, and then your subconscious mind helps you, you know, to achieve um, the behavior. And then, so the, this is just an example of the tiny habits method. So after I sit down at work, I will turn off notifications for social media. So we have the anchor behavior, we have the new, the tiny behavior, the new desired something that we want to do. And then we have to celebrate. That's a really important part. We have to, right? Yeah. We have to just look at ourselves in the mirror and just say, you know, you did it. I mean, it, that looks different for everybody. We have a client in our class now. She, she gives herself a high five every mm -hmm. time she, she okay. achieves something. Yeah. And it's, it, it feels silly. It's kind of funny, but it works. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really does. And then there's a, a blank one here if anybody wants to screenshot it, but I can also send these out or you can Google them. They're Googleable and downloadable. And then the implementation, uh, yeah, the implementation intention. So in this example, I will put my phone in my bag before breakfast at, they gave themselves a time frame, you know, in the kitchen or hallway. So if you've got, you know, if, you forget certain things, certain items on a regular basis. This is a great way to help yourself remember. So love that. Love yeah. that. Love and that. Yeah. If anybody came up with any examples, I'd love for them to share or something they want to try. Absolutely. Please by all means drop something in the chat there of some of your examples. What I will say, uh, and, and we're, we're coming uh, close to our, our wrap up, I'll just wrap up by just starting out uh, with, with a thank you to Karen um, for taking the time out today. And I think the work that you do with New Beginnings, that you and the team, uh, I feel like I can speak for everyone on here to say is we're so grateful for that work um, you've done and you continue to do to support um, our community and the, the, the specific things that uh, around health uh, that they're facing our community. So um, it, it's wonderful to have partners like you uh, for United Way to have a great yeah. partner like you. We're, we're definitely grateful for it. Um, I'll also say thank you to all of the attendees for joining. Um, obviously, these Tour Tuesdays wouldn't be a thing if it wasn't for you all joining 
uh, and supporting our work. Um, uh, absolutely could not happen without you. What I will say uh, is that I know that are, there's probably some folks that uh, may have uh, some questions and I see we, we got one coming in through, uh, oh, uh, Natalie, thank you. Uh, she's just saying how much she appreciated um, hearing more about the program. I will say that this, all this information uh, is something that will be available to everyone. Uh, I'll share my contact information after the, um, the presentation. Each one of the attendees, everybody that's joined will get my contact information as well as that of Karen uh, and New Beginnings. And so um, please, by all means, um, feel free to reach out if you have any follow-up questions. I know Karen and the team at New Beginnings would love for you all to connect and get Absolutely. engaged. Uh, and either volunteer or become clients. I think mm -hmm. that obviously the the work, the focal point of the work is you, is the community. Uh, and so we definitely want uh, want you all to join uh, if and when you can. Um, yeah, we have a question from the chat that, that okay. somebody is asking uh, if they want to get involved. How do we? Uh, how do they get in contact with you, Karen, and uh, to coordinate the uh, volunteer opportunities? Um, yeah, the, um, my email address is um, K Gillingham. And will this be shared, Darius? Will my contact information be shared? So it will. Um, it yeah, will. so, um, but I'll just K Gillingham at tnbcenter.org. And you, um, you actually, you can drop that in the chat for oh, all the, yes, the folks there yeah, as well. Let me do that real quick. Yeah, good idea. Um, and then I'll also just say that, that this, all the information is covered here will be available uh, if, if, if anyone is interested. We'll send out the, um, the recording uh, that you all can view and share with the rest of your teams. But by all means, uh, reach out, connect with us, uh, and, and help to continue the work that, that uh, New Beginnings and uh, Karen and her team are doing to support our community. Yeah, and I just put in, um, I think I got both of them in there. Did, do you see it, Darius? My... I put in my email address and website. Did it go in? Uh, I don't see it. You don't see yet. it? Okay. Hold on a second. Um, and then real quick too, I also just want to reiterate, um, thanks for everybody attending today and listening um, as we as I went through all of this. And, um, and thank you to um, United Way as well for, for your support. It's been amazing and a, and a great journey with y'all. And we do appreciate um, all the help that you give us so that we can make our work possible. Absolutely. We're, we're more than happy to, to help and support the work that you all are doing, Karen. And I just dropped um, in the chat uh, a link for anybody that wants to uh, follow up. I definitely would encourage everyone to, to take some time uh, when you get a second to hit the website, hit that link, uh, and just find out more information about our Tour Tuesdays going forward. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll share all of the, the information that we've covered today, either via recording, uh, slide deck, or just um, subsequent emails. Um, so thank you again. Yes. Uh, again, none of this uh, would be possible without all of your support. Uh, we're so grateful Thanks. for for everyone that, that not only has tuned in, but has been supporting um, all of our work throughout the year um, and also specifically supporting uh, Karen and her team over there at New Beginning. So yes. thank you so much, um, yes. Karen. Do you have anything in, in closing before we head out? No, just be well. And um, yeah, just wishing you all um, good health and wellness throughout the rest of this year. Um, but please do reach out if, um, if you would like more information about the work that we do or um, you know, to join in on one of our programs. I'd love to hear from you. But thank Definitely. you. Well, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'll say have a wonderful rest of your day. Show love to your neighbor. Yes. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye.